Hello folks and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Uh, today is a little bit different as you can see we've got uh, the google.com up over here as well as my face which has been relegated to the top corner of the screen. Um, the reason for this is because I am going to talk about uh, a topic that has been coming up a lot recently for me which is the debate between using a DSLR for video versus using an actual video camera for video. Um, a lot of people, myself included, are huge fans of using um, digital SLRs or uh, digital single lens reflex cameras for shooting video. Now, for those of you who don't know, let me actually pull this up. A DSLR is uh, this. It's just a, a digital camera, essentially, right? Um, uh, this here is an image of the Canon 5D Mark III, very popular um, DSLR with the uh, Canon lens on here. It looks to be the 24 to 70, another really popular lens. The benefit of these for photography is that you get an interchangeable lens system. You can swap out a lens if you need to get in closer. You can put on like a 70 to 200. If you need to go wide, you put on a 16 to 35, whatever your, the case may be. And they take fantastic images because they're designed as as still image cameras. They're the evolution of what SLRs were to film. Uh, these are now digital SLRs, which is, of course, for digital photography. Now, recently it has been coming up on uh, different sites that I you know, stumble upon, different YouTube videos, things like that, where people have been uh, complaining about the lack of video features for DSLRs because obviously something like the Canon 5D uh, Mark III is capable of shooting a uh, pretty fantastic quality video footage. Um, or even if you, you know, something like the Canon uh, 7D uh, Mark II or the 70D um, are all cameras that are designed for still photography but that happen to shoot really fantastic uh, video footage. Now, people have been complaining about uh, the lack of professional video camera features on these different DSLRs and how, you know, Canon, and I, I speak from a, a perspective of Canon. I own Canon cameras. I am very unfamiliar with the Nikon lineup, so um, I'm sure this applies to Nikon as well, but I'm, I'm speaking more from a Canon perspective. Uh, people uh, are saying that they're upset with Canon because they're not putting in any professional uh, features. They're not, you know, putting in a lot of professional video features to these DSLRs. And the reason I wanted to make this video was to sort of explain why Canon shouldn't be putting a lot of professional video features into DSLRs. The thing that people forget is that digital cameras, DSLRs, are designed for photography. They're still image cameras. They're not designed for video use. They're not designed for professional video use. The fact that they can shoot video is fantastic, but that's not why we buy DSLRs. We buy them because they're very good at taking still images. All right, so now we can talk a little bit about professional video cameras. Now, these are cameras that are designed for video use. They're going to be your, you know, your red epic cameras, your you know black magic cinema cameras, your Canon uh, C series of cameras, right? And those are going to be your true uh, professional level film, uh, not film cameras, but they're they're video cameras. They're designed for taking you know moving images. Um, now, the interesting thing, and I think the reason that a lot of people are drawn to DSLRs is that they're sort of uh, touted as a best of both worlds sort of scenario, right? You can take really good still images, you can take really good video footage, so you know, go go with a, a DSLR, that's going to be your best option. And for people who are starting out in, in visual storytelling, um, maybe you're not sure if you like photography or film, you want to experiment with both, then a, a DSLR is a fantastic starting point. The issue, again, is that DSLRs are not inherently designed for video. They are fantastic still image cameras and they have fantastic image quality, but a lot of the features you're looking for in a pro-level camera for video are not present on DSLRs. Now, 
A lot of people are going to talk about this camera, the Canon 70D. Uh, this is a fantastic camera. I don't own it personally, but I have used it many times uh, professionally to shoot weddings uh, for video. I've never used it for photography. Um, but this camera is a fantastic uh, uh, video camera, truly, and it's not designed for that. Well, this camera specifically, Canon did put a lot of effort into the video portion of it, but you have to remember at the end of the day, it is still a still image camera. Does it have a lot of features for video? Yes. Is it fantastic image quality for video? Yeah. But it's an it's a it's a still image camera. That's it. The DSLR is not a video camera. Um and people complain about the audio um on on DSLRs and how there's not enough features. You should never be recording audio on your camera anyways. Really, you should have it in a, you know, a separate um audio source. Um, be mix, you know, have a, an audio mixer that you're running things through and then recording it completely independent of your camera. That's why clapboards exist. Um, but that's another topic. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a fantastic camera. And if we look here, uh, you can see at um, B and H Photo, it's you know, twelve hundred dollars, uh, twelve hundred at Walmart, twelve hundred at Ritz camera. It's basically twelve hundred dollars. And I think that might be with, yeah, that's with a, a kit lens. You can get it a little bit cheaper if you do the body only. But I mean, that's. Let's say you shop the deals. You get a used camera. Maybe you're paying eight or nine hundred dollars. So let's say nine hundred bucks, right? Nine hundred dollars. You've got a a camera that takes fantastic still images, fantastic video, and that's great. But what if you are just starting out? You don't have nine hundred dollars. Well, the um, the T3i is a older camera, but it still holds its weight. Um, it holds its own against uh, newer models. It's a fantastic camera, um, and as you can see, this is you know pretty much. I think this is brand new with a kit lens. It's you know 650 bucks. If you go on you know eBay or Craigslist and search for it used, you could probably get just the body as low as like three or four hundred bucks if you really search for it. So that's this is a fantastic deal. Again, it's video and still image capable, but it's designed as an entry level still image DSLR that shoots video, right? That's a, that's an asterisk afterwards that shoots video. Its primary goal is to be an entry level still image camera. Um, the reason though that a lot of people are drawn to DSLRs for video is because of the insane price difference between a, a, a still image camera and a professional video camera. So if we look at Let's do this. If we look at the Canon 7D Mark II, um, you know, you're looking at in, in retail from Canon, I think is like $1,700. Um, B&H right now is at, you know, $1,400. Um, and a lot of these places are at $1,400. If you can get this camera at a at a deal, it's it's a fantastic camera, but um, and it shoots shoots solid video. It's actually a, a fantastic camera all around, and it's it seems expensive, right? It's fourteen hundred dollars, but this is the high end. Give it. I mean, there's there's variables, you know, full frame crop sensor, blah blah blah. But there are variables. But give or take, this is one of the higher end models of Canon camera that shoot. Uh, really good video versus this which is the lowest end one of the lower end Canon uh, cinema line cameras boom you're already at fifty five hundred dollars for the low end the, in this this range the C series goes up to a C 500 um, which is like fifteen or twenty thousand dollars I think um, let me find out actually <laughs> since I have Google 500 yeah right Fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars for, you know, for essentially quote unquote the same image quality that you'd get out of a seventy Mark II, for only fourteen hundred dollars. But the number of features for video production on the C five hundred or even the C one hundred Mark II, these are the the quality of footage is going to be roughly the same because you're using the same you know the same lenses the Canon brand lenses and you're using the uh, you know the same technology but the features and 
functions that are present in these uh, cinema line cameras like built-in ND filters, um, you know, you have all of the information on that screen. You've got your zebras, you've got your peaking, all of this stuff um, on the cinema line cameras that don't exist on the still image cameras because those cameras are, again, they're designed for still images. Um, and even on this camera, the audio is going to be better. Yes, you should still be probably recording to an external recorder, but if you only have that camera available to you, if you only have the C100, you're going to be able to record XLR audio input to the camera versus the um, the you know a, a DSLR where the best the best possible audio input is going to be this guy, right? That's it. <laughs> That's the best, and this is this is not even a pro level. The the this is I don't know what they call it. It's like a they're just like a I don't know it's not a quarter inch because quarter inch would be at least you know borderline professional or it is professional but um, it's like a three eighths inch or something weird like that um, so my point is and, and this has been a long winded video to say something that's very basic if you want to take pictures by a DSLR if you want to shoot video by a a video camera now you know the the five $5,500 for the C100 Mark II is significantly out of a lot of people's price range. They would rather deal with the issues and trials and tribulations of using something like the Canon 70D for a grand. Is it going to shoot, uh, you know, fantastic quality video footage? Yeah, it's going to do that. There are plugins you can get for it from places like Blackmagic that allow you to get some of those features that are present on higher quality video cameras and use them on a DSLR. Is this going to be the best option if you are full on, I love video and that is my life and I'm going to be a filmmaker and I'm going to shoot weddings and I'm going to, like, your life is video, save the money, save it up, buy a, buy a professional cinema camera or a, a professional video camera um, because you're going to get a lot more features, you're going to be a lot happier in the long run with your purchase and it's going to allow you to grow with the product versus with the situation that I'm in is I'm using DSLRs for video. Um, I do wedding videos and I use you know a 70 Mark II, a 70D, a 60D. Um, one of the camera that I use most of the time is this one. This is one that I own. It's a Canon 60D. It's a fantastic camera. It's a little bit older. I think it might be discontinued at this point. I'm not sure. Um, but this one you can get, I mean, it says it's 590 used on eBay. You can get it cheaper than that. If you search hard enough, you can get a 60D for like four or 500 bucks and it's a fantastic camera. Um, but again, you're going to run into issues. It's, uh, I think it only records video for 20 minute stretches of time. So if you're doing weddings, uh, one of the things that I've discovered about DSLRs at weddings is when you, you know, when you put up a, a camera on a tripod for recording a ceremony, you better be on top of it to make sure that as soon as it clicks off uh, at that 20 minute mark, you're back uh, recording because you don't want to miss anything. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my spiel on on professional uh, video cameras versus DSLRs. Um, I think that if you're starting out, a DSLR is definitely the way to go. It's going to let you explore whether or not you prefer video or film. Uh, it's, I mean, video or still images. It's going to let you really, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, have fantastic image quality on your videos, as well as um, providing still image capabilities. Um, in fact, it's going to, you know, be better at still images because it's kind of designed for that. <laughs> and it's going to allow you the ability of switching out lenses and and building a, a, up a lens collection, which is probably more important than, well, it is more important than than having a good body. So if you're looking at just starting out, go with something like the Canon T3i. Um, I think it was this one. Yeah, go with like the, the Rebel T3i or the T4i um, and, and, and really invest maybe in a good 50 millimeter prime or 20, uh, 28 millimeter prime, something like that. Um, you're gonna get a lot more out of a good lens than you are a good camera when you're starting out. That being said, if you're really serious about it, if you have the money, if you're making um, money professionally shooting video, 
something like the the C100 Mark II or maybe even the C300, uh, depending on your budget, it's gonna it's gonna be better in the long run if you're doing video because it's just it's designed for video, right? It's it's made for that. Um, these DSLRs are fantastic, and I swear by them. But at the end of the day, you do have to understand that they're designed for still images. Even even if Canon is sitting there marketing the 70D as a film camera, as a as a moving image video camera, if they're marketing it as such, then yes, they do need to live up to the expectations that they themselves set in their marketing plan. But at the end of the day, it's still just a a photography camera that shoots video. Does it shoot it well? Yes. Is it designed for it? No, no matter what Canon says. So <laughs> hopefully this was uh, helpful to someone out there uh, trying to decide what the heck to go with and uh, what to expect um, in a DSLR if they do decide to purchase it. I highly recommend it. Even if you're you know, just a, a photography hobbyist, you're thinking about getting into it a little bit more professionally maybe, um, you definitely get a DSLR play with it, um, see what it can do. Um, go out, you know, online, get some used equipment that uh, is dirt cheap. You know, maybe it has a scratch on it, maybe it's a little bit dinged up, but hey, if you're just getting started and you want to explore the um, the insane amount of, of uh, different manufacturers and different um, lens types and different camera types, um, Go with, go with some used equipment, see if it's something you want to do, and then and move on from there. And do your research and know what you're getting before you get it. All right. Well, without further ado, I'll go ahead and end this video <laughs> finally. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, one quick update. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Um, I have decided to switch uh, days. I'm no longer doing a video on Sunday. I'm going to be doing videos Monday now. So Monday is the day um, to expect new videos on this channel. And without further ado, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.